Mark Faber is dead wrong when it comes to Southeast Asia. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson, editor-at-large of NomadCapitalist.com, where we share tips on finding more freedom, more opportunity, and a better lifestyle beyond your own borders. Now, before I talk about that, take a moment, subscribe to our channel, get all of my best stuff right here on YouTube, and make sure to not miss a single actionable video. Now, I'm a big fan of Mark Faber's, actually. I've I had lunch with one of his business partners in Cambodia, and I believe that uh, his business partner may actually have a little bit better strategy when it comes to Asia uh, than he does. Now, here's the good about what Mark Faber has been saying lately. The U.S. stock market is overbought. There's not a lot of growth. There are a lot of stocks that have gone wild on funny money, and shorting the U.S. market is uh, probably a good strategy to take part in. Now, on top of that, uh, Mark Faber said that he's a big fan of Vietnam and Thailand, and that he's putting money into emerging market real estate in those countries. Now, I've been criticized for saying that I'm a fan of Vietnam, and I do see some opportunities. I think there are other countries in Asia that offer better potential, such as Cambodia, possibly Malaysia, uh, but I like Vietnam. However, Mark Faber said he's buying real estate in Vietnam, and I have to understand, I'm trying to understand why. Uh, when you look at Hanoi, when you look at Ho Chi Minh City, people there have basically used real estate as one of the only stores of value. People poured cash into all kinds of properties, and now that the market is ready to fall apart uh, in those uh, places in Vietnam, no one wants to admit that, so they're just going to keep their money tied up and uh, not uh, liquidate their properties because they don't want to take a loss. There's uh, an ego involved and it's artificially propping up the market all across Vietnam. Now, Mark Faber will not just say that he is a fan of Da Nang in Vietnam, which uh, I feel good to say that we've been talking about here for uh, six or seven months on Nomad Capitalist, that uh, Da Nang is a uh, future resort town that will capitalize off of China. Uh, mainland China has very few uh, real resort towns. Much, many of the beaches there are kind of run down, and I say that as a guy who is a fan of, of China. Uh, but outside of Da Nang, I really fail to see the opportunity in Vietnam when it comes to real estate. I think things are massively overpriced, and I don't know that I want to trust a government that has beat their currency into the ground and has now been even talking about confiscating gold as a place that I want to invest large sums of money. I do think Da Nang will be successful, but I don't know that I want to be part of that. Now, Mark Faber also said that he is a fan of Thai real estate, uh, and it, it was interesting because I was reading a comment on a Zero Hedge article uh, from someone who's lived in Bangkok for over a decade and said he wouldn't buy a green banana in Thailand. And I have to admit it's amusing, but uh, I 100% agree. I'm constantly getting emails from people at Nomad Capitalist about why I don't give Bangkok and Thailand higher marks, and, and the answer is simple. It's a horrible place to put money. Thailand is the Argentina of Asia. People uh, love uh, revolution there. It's just, it's coursing through their veins, I think. I'm not a fan of the culture. I think it's one of the outliers in Asia, in fact, in terms of uh, potential growth and, and future growth. I think you'll see Thailand as a laggard. Uh, even with Myanmar, this frontier economy right next door, I think that uh, Thailand will fall behind. Uh, you have so many people, local ties, doing off the books real estate deals in condos that are basically pump and dump schemes. They're uh, buying these off-plan condos and then selling them back into the market later at, for, for tax-free kind of hidden profits, and it's inflating uh, the price. I, I think that Thailand is a huge real estate bubble. I think anyone who knows the area uh, knows that. Bangkok uh, real estate is a ticking time bomb, and again, you've got uh, families who are wealthy in Thailand who are buying wedding gifts for their kids the, the wedding gift is a condo, and they're buying condos in luxury areas. I don't think it's sustainable. You have a country that does not value wealth, a government that is out of control, and I don't see any reason to put a dime in Thailand. Those are my objections to what Mark Faber has to say. I agree with so much of what Mark Faber says, and I share his view that the U.S. economy is in bad shape. I share his view that gold uh, should be a, a big part of your insurance policy right now, and that uh, companies related to gold look attractive as well, but I can't say that I agree on Southeast Asia because I see much better opportunities, like I said, in Cambodia, uh, in Malaysia, and elsewhere. It all comes to show, in my opinion, that the places everyone is talking about are often not uh, the places that you want to go. Myanmar has been 
heralded as one of the top emerging frontier markets. And I think even that's overblown. I think that real estate there is way overpriced and the opportunities there aren't nearly what people think they are. I'm always focused on the places that no one's talking about, the next big places, and that's what I talk about at Nomad Capital. So if you want to hear more information like that, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I know a lot of people will take umbrage with my criticisms of Bangkok. Personally, as an investor, I not only believe that there are much better opportunities elsewhere, but I would be scared to put my capital into the Thai system. Leave a comment below, subscribe, and make sure to get my free newsletter at nomadcapitalist.com.